Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another time of Bible teaching. Not a lot of Bible in this one. I just finished up a Bible teaching talking about, um, that came out on, um, which I wrote, explained that next time people are going to be talking about uh, Ninth of Ab, which there's no way the Ninth of Ab or Tisha B'Av is going to be the rapture. I talked about some of the things that people talk about that are just ridiculous, that don't make sense. And I gave you a resource, my teacher, where you can go and learn about the feast days of the Lord, his appointed times, and get a better understanding if you would like. At the tail end of that video, I was going to go to do something else, and I decided not to, about eclipses. So I'm gonna, I figured I would do a video to tell that, because somebody's going to be out there saying, that's not fair! You needed to tell us that! How can you do that? I, I get it, I get it. I've had people email me and say that before, uh, people who I've been in touch with, and it's, it's cool, I get it. So, um, here's what I'm going to throw out at you. There are no verses in the Bible that connect an eclipse with a rapture. There are lots of verses, um, like in, I forget what it is, in the beginning of Psalms 8, 9 or something, that talks about the, the heavens declare the... the okay, now let's go, let's find it. It's heaven or heavens. I think it's heavens, but I'll do this to be sure. Declare. Yeah, Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day it utters speech, and night unto night it reveals knowledge. In other words, the heavens should be telling us about Messiah. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun which is like the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run a race. When you see the bridegroom coming out of the chamber and the bride's not with him, that's rapture. But it doesn't say that there's going to be an eclipse before the rapture. It doesn't say that, okay? The closest you get to it is the great day. And we're looking for Joel 2. There's a reason I just did great, great, great day. Here it is. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into light before the great an awesome day of the Lord. That's the same thing as the great and terrible day of the Lord. It really is the same thing when you start looking up definitions of words. I used to really get confused by that. Is it awesome or terrible? It's the same thing. It's just how it was translated into English. Um, I used to think this was before the rapture until I realized the great day is the great tribulation. And it was something I put together from another ver number of verses, and I found, like, my teacher, and I was listening to a random teaching, and he made that same comment. I'm like, okay, confirmation. See, we also see something similar to this in Hosea. So, by the way, if this is the great day, then it's before the midpoint of tribulation, if it's the great tribulation. Okay, let me just leave you with that. Um, there was something in similar to this in... Hosea, no, Micah, Micah 5, 4, 5. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the dreadful and awesome day are the same. Does Elijah the prophet come before the rapture? No, he's one of the two witnesses. But he does come before the midpoint. I guess you could say the beginning of the rapture, but it doesn't have to be the beginning of the rapture. It has to be before the beginning of the midpoint. He's one of our two witnesses that we see in the book of Revelation. All right. If the rapture were to happen this year on Rosh Hashanah, and as I believe, Yom Kippur starts tribulation so that when it ends, the seven years of tribulation ends on Yom Kippur, it'll be exactly seven years. Okay? That's going to put the midpoint of tribulation right about, Rosh Hashanah, right about uh, Passover. Go to Daniel real quick, Daniel 12, or go to Daniel 9, 27. Tribulation is found in Daniel 9, 27. Ah. 
you notice all the times in scripture it talks about like halves of script halves of uh the rapture is times times half a times 1260 days three and a half years you know times times half a times 42 months it's very specific right this one's not then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to the sacrificing and offering uh, on the Wing of abominations, there shall be one who makes desolate. This is just, there'll be an abomination of desolation on the edge, in the middle, uh, on one of the wings of the temple. That's actually, it's very specific where, but anyhow, the middle of the week, the midst, that's not the exact middle. We know that the remnant of Israel will be fed and cared for in Petra for three and a half years. We also know it's this abomination of desolation that they have to see in order for them to know it's time to go, right? So it can't happen at the exact middle point, or else it's time to go. Oh, it's too late. We missed it. Same day. All right. So go to Daniel 12. Understand Daniel 12. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Give me a second. I'm just, this is, I, I wouldn't plan to come here, so I'm just trying to formulate in my mind how I want to take you. Look at verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, tribulation, such as never was since there was a nation. Messiah uses this exact same phrase in Revelation 24 to specifically talk about the great tribulation. Daniel 12 is about the midpoint of tribulation on. This is what I want to do down here. Um... And those who are wise shall shine like the firmament, or the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, righteousness and lawlessness are opposites. Righteousness is a right standing with God. It has to do with following his ways. Not just having a savior because you've accepted and you believe, but also have a Lord that you follow and obey. You got to have both. And, and having a Lord that you follow and obey means nothing if you haven't come to Messiah by faith. Seriously. And those who turn many to righteousness shall shine like stars ever, ever, forever and ever. This is what we all should be striving for. But anyhow, let's come down here further where we came for. From the time that the daily sacrifices is taken away and the abomination of, ses of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. That's 30 days too many. It doesn't take you to 30 days afterwards. It starts 30 days before the midpoint. The Jews will have 30 days to know they can go. They got to get time to go to Petra. You know, time to make the down. It's time to go to Petra. It's time to go to Petra. They got 30 days to get there. They're probably walking. You know, AI is going to shut down all the roads, all that kind of stuff. They're probably walking. AI is in, uh, excuse me, AI. Um, Petra's in southern Jordan. All right. So 30 days to get there. If the midpoint is um, Passover. 30 days before Passover is Purim. What is Purim? That has to do with Queen Esther. It's a celebration of Israel being saved from utter annihilation. Oh, what better day to have this cited on? Think about it. So, during the midpoint of tribulation, the, the church has been raptured. The Antichrist is gathering up steam. At the exact midpoint, uh, Satan's going to come down and indwell the, I keep saying the ant, the Holy Spirit, but the, the, he's going to come down and indwell the Antichrist. You got to get Israel out of the way beforehand. God is really reaching out. Messiah is really reaching out to the Jews at this time. So it hit me a little while ago. It hit me. When I, when I got this whole understanding that the great day is that great tribulation, if that's true, there should be a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse right before the midpoint of tribulation, right before that, right but sometime before the um, um, Purim. So if the Jews see this and they're like, see that verse, and they put, start putting things together. So if you want to see if there's a, uh, uh, eclipse to be found, you can go to a website called Time and Date. You just put in, I, I Google Time, Time Date Eclipses, 
and you click on it, you come here, and you just enter the year in. So in 2028, what kind of eclipses do we have? Um, this says partial lunar eclipse. Let's click on it. This is almost a total lunar eclipse. Here's the map. And here's Israel. Israel's going to see this. But when you look here, at this map here, you can see that Israel is completely in it. So it's going to be moving over. And Israel is going to see this lunar eclipse on January 11th, 12th, in that ballpark. Passover is usually in the fourth month of our year, like March, April. So um, February, March is when you're going to have Purim. So just before that, you're going to have this uh, lunar eclipse. Let's go back and look in 2027. No, that's not right. Give me a second. Come down. So we had a lunar eclipse, and now we're looking for a solar eclipse. Here's one on August 2nd. It's a total lunar eclipse. And it's passing. Israel's right there. So they're going to have a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse right before the midpoint of tribulation. Something else is interesting about this date. In our last video, we talked about Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. So let's look at something. When is that in 2027? begins Wednesday, August 11th, and ends Thursday, August 12th. But as I spoke about in that other video, the three weeks that lead up to it, it's the time between when the wall was broken down and when the temple fell. That three-week period is known between the straits. It's where we get our word dire straits out of. I've always thought, doesn't have to be, I've always thought that something bad is going to happen to Israel the year before the, the time before the rapture on Tisha B'Av. It's a personal thought. It's not something from Scripture. But it'll be during this time that they see that lunar eclipse. Is it a lunar one, this one? I forget. That's a solar eclipse at that point. Anyhow, I thank you guys for watching. May God bless you and have a great day.